Hey guys, I'm here with my video response to episode 229. Good to hear the uh, pipes and pappy combo there, guys. Sounded really cool and really great. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. The new Squire Jaguar. I actually played a, um, it was a Jag Stang. It was a Jaguar. Short scale guitar once, a Squire. And I, and I was thinking about buying it um, in Australia. It was like 650 bucks. And it, it felt quite good. Although when I got to the high frets, I kept over, um, like over jumping the frets, sort of overestimating where they were, because I'm used to playing 25 and a half inch scale um, guitars. But um, yeah, that's a, it's a cool, um, cool guitar. Checked it out. So um, that's an interesting thing, Pappy, about Taylor Swift coming through your amp. Back in the days, oh geez, this was years ago when I played in a band, and this band that I played in, they were like basically you could say they were sort of the the guys that got me into playing guitar as well because I used to play keys and um and so and one of my friends would start a band and that's what got me into playing guitar really so anyways I remember we used to go to this place called Sweet Leaf Rehearsal Studios and Sweet Leaf Rehearsal Studios is a dodgy, dodgy, dodgy place to the point where on the walls it was sort of just carpet. Then on the roof it was literally egg carton shell, like the cartons from from eggs, you know, you know, a dozen eggs. And um, that they, they, they had a PA, real old, you know, old sort of stuff in there. But it was cheap. It was like something like nine dollars an hour to to rent the room. Um, so we we used to. We used to jam there, and then um, I remember there was a band next next to us, and, and I don't know how they got up with all the dodgy stuff, but you couldn't really hear the band. Like, you could just hear them; they were muffled. The guys next to you, however, at one point it became very clear that there was a band next to us, and that's because somehow their gear was coming through my amplifier. I had a, a really, really, really dodgy. Um, it was called a pro amp. It was a copy of a Marshall. Marshall and 12 inch speaker I sound like rubbish and yeah it used to um it picked up other bands it used to pick up radio signals like AM radio and things like that it was, it was kind of silly but it was my amp it was all I had I didn't have any money so but um no I know exactly exactly what you mean by that exactly uh what's next the picks pipes with uh, that pedal I'm glad that pedal I made for you um, is on your pedal board and you're using it. That was one of the first pedals I made. And, um, yeah, I, you know, I didn't really know how to use a boost either when I actually made it. But then when you, when you crank that thing up and because it cuts the highs, it really fattens up the signal. Um, something about it, it it's awesome, you know, it's really cool. I use a similar effect sort of boost, although the circuitry is way different, but same sort of thing, cuts the highs a bit and fattens up the tone for uh, most of the stuff I play. Which is which is pretty cool. Um, what have we got here next? Now I've only really listened to the episode once, but I thought I'd put this up here for you guys, and I'll listen to it again. But picks, as in plectrums, I was looking for the um, James Hetfield sort of black fang, fang plectrums, but um, I couldn't find them. I was at the music store um, two weeks ago or so when I bought uh, this pedal that I'm using now. I don't know if you can see that there, the vocal pedal, and. Um, and I, I wanted to get that pick, and I was asking the guy, and he didn't really know what I was talking about, which was weird. So um, I ended up getting something else. Now, I've gotten really used to the pointy sort of picks. Now, I used to use these a lot. This is a, um, let that thing focus, one millimeter Dunlop uh, nylon, which I used for years and years and years. And then I found these things, uh, 1.15 millimeter I don't even know what it is, Grover Holman or something like that, whatever. Um, pick, which has got a bit more of a tip on it, a little bit more. However, then I um, thought, you know what, I'm going to check out the stubbies. Because the stubbies, if that's going to come up there, the stubbies are really, really, really pointy. But they're small, it's like a Jazz 3 pick. Good for leads, not so great for rhythms for me. But I'm getting used to it, and, and it really is cleaning up my playing a lot. But then I saw something else, the big stubby. So I, I picked up uh, one of these. This is a two millimeter pick and um, it, it's great. It's really, really pointy. Feels really good in, in your hand when you're playing, you know. And um, yeah, really, really good for pinch harmonics and things like that. 
No, a really, really good uh, pick. Better than this thing. The pointless pick. But anyway, um, yeah, so I, I really prefer the more of the sort of sharp, sharp um, point on picks these days. Um, really sort of cleans up my playing and I can be more precise and quicker as well because I only, I only really let, you know, just the tip of it, just that little tiny tip, you know, grab the string. So, um, yeah, but I, I want to track down those uh, Hetfield uh, fang picks, that's for sure. For sure. I'm um, getting into that was, a, that was a cool review on the cables there about the um, Armour Gold cable. It, um, I've been using just cables that are like 30 bucks gold connectors I guess they're half decent but uh, I never really thought about it a lot and, and until a few years ago and then um, it really does make a difference to get some decent cables whether you can hear that yourself and whether you know the rest of your gear is up to scratch but um, you know a good cable is always really good and um, having something strong like that I don't know how many times with my, my computer chair here I've rolled over my cables and put slices in them then I you know unsolder the um, the quarter inch jack and then I put some heat shrink over it and then keep going but um, it'd be cool to have a cable like that which is which is pretty good so um, anyway get into the the gal the deftones now I was never really into the deftones that much but I do have um, adrenaline so which is it's a cool album some of the stuff's a bit weird uh, I never really got into them Although I always found uh, Steve Carpenter's guitars to be really interesting. They look cool. And um, yeah, the, the dual humbuckers close together towards uh, more bridge and middle position. It was an interesting concept. I'm the same as you, Pappy. I don't really um, like middle pickups. Um, I used to have a lot of problems with hitting them. I don't really anymore than I know that I've cleaned up a bit of my playing. But I just, I just don't like them. I never use them. I actually don't even use a neck pickup on my guitars. I only use a bridge pickup and that's it. I don't even use my tone control. So um, for, for me, having a middle pickup is, is sort of a no-no with my guitars. I know a lot of people will obviously argue against that because everyone's different, you know. But I'm the same. I don't, I don't like middle pickups. And that, that's one thing that you know, puts me off some guitars that I want, you know, which is sad because some, some guitars you really want. But it's little things like that that will just put you off it. But anyway, let's get on to pipes and your review of the Morley wire pedal I would like to review that pedal I don't know what the um, regulations are of who gets to review the pedal or what but as you can see in the background I've got some decent gear I've got microphones high quality audio interface a decent gaming computer I don't play games but I built it so I could record music and um, yeah I would I would love to review that pedal and I'd love to have a Morley pedal um, yeah, I'm kind of getting sick of the foot switch on my, um, my crybaby and, um, my sorcerer wire that I made. So, you know, the way I could review it is I could, I could literally just, you know, pull the thing apart, like, not literally, but like in, in the, um, review and I could explain why you would have optical wires and what the difference is and how they're a benefit as opposed to mechanical pot wires and so forth and how you can manipulate the, the sweep and that sort of thing and then, gives sound samples as well on how quiet they are, how reliable. You know, you never have to worry about the parts breaking down. And I play a couple of riffs clean, um, single coil and humbucker mode, things like that, active and passive. Whatever you want, I can do it. So I want to win that pedal. I do. Um, so yeah, I, I've been thinking about wire pedals and even though the one, one I built is pretty good, I kind of, I kind of get annoyed with the switching sometimes because I play a lot sitting down and it's sometimes it's a bit hard to switch it and you know, click it on and off. So I was thinking about getting an Ibanez um, Weeping Demon Junior pedal, the, the new one, just the basic one because it's cheaper. But um, I'll see how that goes. You know, I've got two wire pedals, so um, well, I'm thinking about selling one of them. But anyway, so um, cool track, Pappy, at the end. I liked it. It was really good to hear um, hear you on an outro track. I think that's the first time we have heard you on one. And um, I hope there's many, many more, guys. Many more. But apart from that, I'm going to cut this video off now because I'm going to talk too much. But guys, once again, thank you for an awesome episode. And I uh, can't wait to uh, hear the next. Catch ya.